Hi, Les from Thailand here from Retired and Living the Dream. And today's video has been much anticipated by many, many people with regard to buying a, a 1.3 million baht house. Now, if you haven't seen my other videos, have a look at these videos with regard to the three houses that I've featured on one of my videos, ranging from 2.9 million down to 1.3 million. And it's the 1.3 million baht house that we're going to discuss today. Now the reasons for me buying a house is because I've been paying rent for a number of years now and we have an opportunity to be able to buy a house for not much more than what we would pay for rental for the house that we're living in now. But over, over a period of time it's wasted money which could go towards buying a house. Now we live in Thailand and there are many many opportunities to be able to buy the house. Now I'm 61 years old and I'm still going to buy a house because it is possible to do it here in Thailand and I'm going to describe a couple of methods today as to how you can do this and the two methods today are financing through the building company and private finance so first of all we'll go on to the building company finance now we looked at a house in May Pim in the Rayong district and this is the house that we looked at 1.3 million now the house next door to it was only 1 million so what else can you buy in your own country like america australia or the uk for virtually 29,000 pounds this is a two bedroomed two bathroomed or the 1 million baht house two bedroomed one bathroom 60 square meters detached on a nice residential area for £29,000. So again, this is the picture. This is what we're going to describe today. And I was offered the deal to buy this house on the day that we viewed it. And then we went back for a second view and the deal got a little bit better on the second because we were almost ready to sign up for this house. So here we go. Here's the nitty gritty facts and figures. I'm going to refer to some notes here because there's lots of facts and figures going on and I don't want to get them mixed up. Now, because the exchange rate changes all the time, these are the roundabout figures that you'd get at today's rates. Now, as I say, they go up and down, so don't hold me down to the, to the final baht or the pound or the dollar. These are rough guesstimates based on today's rates in December of 2021. So 1.3 million is 29,070 pounds. Euros, that's 34,294. US dollars, it's 38,820. Australian dollars, 54,497. So, like I said earlier on, this is a two bedroomed detached house on a nice piece of land small piece of land not very big gardens but easily maintainable on a nice part of rayong i cannot stress how great value these houses were so under negotiation with the agent from this building site um, it was decided that we were going to put 200,000 baht down now 200,000 baht as a deposit, that works out at 4,472 pounds, 5,270 euros, 5,996 US dollars, and 8,375 Australian dollars. Now this was the deposit, and the finance was going to be over seven years. Although we negotiated down to five years, we decided to go with these figures for seven years because it, it just it just makes sense to do it because it's it's cheap living then it's this is for the people who are on a little bit less of a budget and they still want to be able to buy a house and leave it to their partners so like i said in my previous video this method isn't for everybody some people are going to say you're a fool buying a house and one thing and another but it's wasted rent anyway, and that's why I'm doing my comparisons. Rent against buying a house. And the difference in pay monthly payments is not an awful lot. So I wouldn't suggest anybody to go into this lightheartedly. I've been with my partner now for five years, and I trust her 100%, and she trusts me 100%. And it's the thing that we're going to do. 
because at the end of the day it's actually not much more than what I'm paying for rent. So going back onto the figures, so you you are financing this one at 1.3 million baht house with your 200,000 baht deposit, you're financing 1.1 million. Now this was over a seven year period that we negotiated at 5% interest rates. So 1.1 million is 24,597 pounds. Euros 28,987. US dollars 32,813. Australian dollars 46,064 Australian dollars to be able to finance this 1.1 million baht house. So seven years at 5% that would cost you in pounds 348 pounds per month for seven years euros 410 us dollars 464 australian dollars 651 and in baht thai baht that would equate to 15,562 baht per month for seven years then after seven years the house is yours so the total paid is one million 307,208 through the finance of 1.1 million. So let's say you rent this house and I would imagine the rental income for this type of house being in a nice place, nice resort, nice area would be 12,000 baht per month. So doing the figures on 12,000 baht per month rental over the seven year period you would pay, you would pay 1 million and 8,000 baht over that seven year period. So to buy the house over the same period is 1,307,000 baht. So as you can see, the difference between buying and renting is the initial deposit, yes, 200,000 baht. So the monthly payments are roughly 3,500 baht more than what you would be paying to rent the same property. So financially wise it makes sense to be able to buy it if there's offers available and this was offered by the building company themselves now there's 40 odd properties that are getting built on this um, site so therefore the opportunities are there to own a property from 1 million baht upwards and i think it's superb value to be able to buy something like this rather than renting every month so if the opportunity is there why not go and do it? So the total difference over the seven year period from renting to buying, it costs you £4,704 more to buy it over the seven year period than what you would pay in rent. But bearing in mind, you've wasted all of that money in rent. So that's how much extra it costs over the seven year period to be able to buy the house. Now the next way of buying houses, now this is a little bit more complicated but it is possible because we've been around and we've actually done this and it's private finance. Drive around the areas that you like, look for the houses for sale and then give them a call and ask them if they're prepared to do private finance and you'll be turned down so many times because some people want the money there and then but you also will be surprised as we were there were several people offering us to be able to buy the house on private finance now again the negotiation skills come into play here with regard to it was my wife that was ringing these people up so tie on tie and it's how good your partner is with regard to negotiation on how long of a term you can get this property over now just to give you a couple of examples i've got no photographs of the houses that we looked at because we looked at that many but a couple of ideas of, of price wise they were asking for 800,000 baht deposit and these were houses based on two and a half million to three million again and they were asking for the period of money to be paid over a seven year period and this was also at a rate of about five percent so there are deals to be had there are deals possible so don't be afraid of asking people for private finances now at the minute it's a buyer's market because there isn't the people around with the money to be able to buy properties so for instance if somebody's inherited the property because of 
uh, a death in the family or whatever, and it's been on the market for a number of years, a cash lump sum in the hand and then monthly payments is better than nothing at all. So you start to make the deal favourable into their way of thinking, such as what I would suggest is that if you put, say, half a million baht down on a three million baht house and say that if for any reasons you stop paying, the house then becomes theirs. If you, like for instance, if you walk away and stop paying, the house goes straight back to them. So it's a no-brainer for them because at the end of the day, if you stop paying, they get the house back and any money that you've actually paid into it. But again, it's all up to negotiations of what you can do and what deal you can get together. But it can be done. Again, even a three million baht house is about 64, 65,000 pounds. So it's not a lot of money. What could you get in England for that amount of money anyway? So this is a safeguarded method with regard to not paying upfront and paying monthly as opposed to rental. And people turn around and say you're going to lose your money. But if you pay rent, you've lost your money anyway, or you've lost a proportion of that money. So sometimes it might be worth taking the risk and buying as opposed to renting, because it's always going to be in the Thai person's name anyway. So as far as risk is concerned, the only money that you are risking is the monthly payments that you pay. And you'd be paying that in rental anyway. So the places to go and look at with regard to properties, or, or condos in Pattaya, there's 101 different places that are offering rent to buy finance because condos in Pattaya, there's far, far too many condos to the people that are coming there already. So there you are, another couple of options of things to do in Thailand with regard to buying a house. It's not the conventional way with a mortgage and things like that. But then Thailand is a place of opportunities for people to be able to do such things as this. Um, it's not for everybody, I know. But for those people who, who don't like renting and they'd like to buy, it still is possible. Like I said in my other video, it's not irresponsible lending. I'm not putting my wife into debt if I pass away during the, the rental term because I've got adequate insurance and also my wife will receive a pension for the rest of her life. So financially wise, it makes sense to be able to do that and it's covered by my demise. So she will not be left in debt. So I hope this video was helpful. Give it a like if you like it. Give it a thumbs down if you don't like it. Leave your comments down below. I'd be interested to know. And the next video, I'm going to tell everybody which house we actually bought. We've signed the details now and we actually move in to the house in January next year. So from Les, retired and living the dream. Till the next video, bye for now.